Hi, I'm Daniel for Coda Prodigy, and in this video I'm going to teach you how to make a small game in Scratch that I called Zapping Balloons. So here's how this game is going to work. When you hit the start button, when you hit the green flag, the environment which looks like a playground will start producing some music, and some balloons will start rising from the bottom of the screen to the top, and you control this little lightning bolt with your mouse, and your job is to click and zap these balloons that you will score some points. So as these balloons will rise, they will rise randomly, and your job is to hit as many balloons as possible, and here in the top left you will have a score that you can keep track of how many balloons you have zapped. So, in this video I'm going to show you how to program the small game from scratch. So first, what you need to do is go to the Scratch homepage at scratch.mit.edu, where you will program these games, which you can also find here on the Coder Prodigy YouTube channel. If you don't have an account, I recommend you pause the video and create an account now. It takes just a couple of minutes, and if you need any help, I'd recommend asking for an adult, maybe a parent, to help you set up your account. It'll only take a minute. And after you're done, your Scratch homepage should look something like this. And I recommend you click on this icon which looks like a folder where it says your stuff. So this will get you to the list of all the projects that you've created in Scratch. I have quite a few here that I teach on uh, co my Coding for Kids courses. And I want you to click on this button where it says new project. We're going to create this game from scratch. That is from nothing. And right now the empty scratch project will look something like this with a sprite, a character that looks like a cat. I want you to go ahead and delete this character and we will add other characters here to our game. So click on this trash can icon, which is next to the cat and click on here, which will make the cat disappear. So right now you have only the backdrop for your project. And by the way, we are going to add an environment, a backdrop, for our little game, just so that we don't have this white background. So I want you to go here at the bottom right corner and go click on choose a backdrop. And you can pick any backdrop that you like from this list, Scratch has quite a few. So you can choose either one, I like to choose either the party one, which has a bunch of balloons here, which fits with our game, or I can search for play. And I have this environment here, Playground, which I'm going to use for this video. So click on Playground or any other backdrop that you like, and this will serve as the background for our game. Now, you may have noticed from the game description that I showed at the beginning of the video that this game will also have some music and some sounds. And so this is the first time on the Coder Prodigy channel where I'm going to teach you how to add and play sounds in this game. So go ahead and click on the Sounds tab here at the top of the page where it says Sounds, and we will add some music to this game. Now, right now we have a single sound which sounds like a pop. It's very small, and we will add some music that we will play in a loop. So click on this sound icon here and click on choose a sound. And Scratch has a bunch of sounds and music for all the instruments that you can add and so on and so forth. And I'm going to ask you to search for dance. And I'm going to have dance magic, which is right over here dance magic and I recommend you click on the sound and add it to your game so click on dance magic over here and this will be our music for the game and we will play this music repeatedly in a loop so this is where we will add our first block of code so click on the code tab here at the top left where it says code so click on here and we will program the backdrop to play this music forever so i'm going to go to the events the yellow section and i'm going to start a script starting with when flag clicked so when the flag is clicked we will program the backdrop to play this music in a loop so we are going to go to control the light orange section and we're going to drag in a forever loop and place the sound block inside so go to the magenta section here where it says sound and go to this block play sound dance magic until done drag it onto the screen and inside the forever loop so now when we click the start button when we click the green flag this music is played in a loop when the sound is complete then the computer will play it again because it's in a forever loop so when we hit the flag the game sounds like this and you saw here that the script lit up, that is because the computer is executing this block of code, because you programmed it to do that. 
All right, so this is how we program the backdrop to show us the background for our game and also have our little sound, our little music for the game. Now we need to add a bunch of characters so that we can implement our game. So go to this cat icon here and we will add some characters, some sprites for our game. So click on this cat icon where it says choose a sprite and here we will add our first balloon. So click on this balloon number one which you should have at the beginning. If you don't have it, or for some reason you aren't seeing it on the screen, search for balloon here. All right, so type in balloon and you will have this sprite. So click on it and here you'll have a sprite that looks like a balloon. Good, I'm going to name the sprite instead of balloon one, I'm going to name it simply balloon. So just like that. And we're going to create clones of this balloon sprite so that it rises from the bottom of the stage, from the bottom of the screen, and goes all the way to the top side of the screen, and when it reaches the top, it will disappear. So this is the first character, the first sprite of our game. We're going to add another sprite, which looks like a lightning bolt, so that we can zap these balloons as they fly to the top of the screen. So again, click on this cat icon where it says choose a sprite, so click on here, and search for lightning. So type in lightning and you'll have this bolt of lightning here waiting for you. Or you can simply scroll down from the list and you should see it. So this lightning bolt right now is quite big and I'm going to make it a bit smaller. So I'm going to click on the lightning sprite and set its size to 50. That is make it twice as small or half the size. And this is a little bit more acceptable. And we are going to make this lightning bolt follow our mouse all the time. But until we can program it to do that, we are going to click on the lightning sprite, making sure it is selected. And I'm going to change the costume, change the aspect of this sprite a little bit so that whenever the lightning follows my mouse, my mouse is at the tip of the lightning, not in the middle of it. So I'm going to go to costumes here and the sprite has a single costume in the form of a lightning bolt. And I want you to go ahead and select everything. So drag a square or a rectangle such that you select everything in this graphic over here. And right now the lightning bolt is selected. For my taste, I like my lightning bolt a little bit tilted, so I'm going to drag this bottom control and make it look something like that. So I'm going to tilt it a little bit. And also I'm going to drag it such that the tip of the lightning, I want you to be very, very careful here, the tip of the lightning is a bit outside this little cross, which you can see here at the center of the stage. So make sure that whichever kind of aspect you like for your lightning bolt, the tip of the lightning is outside this little cross that you can see here in the middle of the screen. All right, so after you've done that, let's go program this little sprite. So I'm going to go to the code section and we're going to program this little lightning bolt and we're going to program it such that once we hit the flag, this lightning bolt always follows our mouse pointer because our job in this game is to zap balloons. And so this lightning bolt will need to follow wherever our mouse is. So I'm going to go to the yellow event section and I'm going to drag a script starting with when the starting flag clicked. Now, when the starting flag is clicked, I want you to go to the light orange section and drag a forever loop. And forever, the computer will need to move the sprite to wherever the mouse is. So I'm going to go to the blue motion section and I'm going to drag this go to block and I'm going to say go to and instead of a random position, I'm going to say mouse pointer. So the computer at all times will cycle this block and will say go to mouse pointer, go to mouse pointer, go to mouse pointer all the time. So the computer will move this lightning bolt to wherever the mouse is at any given point. So if I hit the flag now, notice that our sound starts to play, so our music, and now our lightning bolt is following our mouse. And notice that wherever the mouse is, the tip of the lightning bolt follows the tip of the mouse pointer. And this is exactly because in the costume section, we made the lightning bolt's tip outside this little cross. This is very, very important. All right. So this is the script which will program the lightning bolt. All right, now let's go program the balloons. This is pretty much everything that we need to do with the lightning bolt. So go to the balloon sprite, so make sure you select that one. And the way that we are going to generate balloons on the screen, because now we have a single one, is going to be 
because of clones. So we are going to clone the sprite and whenever a clone appears on the screen, we're going to program those. So we're going to go to events and I'm going to drag a script starting with when flag clicked and we're going to program various clones here on the screen. So I'm going to drag the uh, from the control section, from the light orange section, I'm going to drag a forever loop and I'm going to create clones of the sprite every one second. So I'm going to drag this wait one seconds block and drag it inside the forever loop and I'm going to scroll down and I'm going to drag this block create clone of myself. So every second this script will create a clone of the balloon. So let's go click the flag and this script will start to get lit up and right now the clones are being created, it's just that we aren't seeing them because all of them are in the same place. So we need to program each one of those. So in order to program the clones, we will need to add another script starting with when I start as a clone. So when a clone appears on the screen, we will need to program it and tell it what to do. So first, in order to create these clones on the screen, I want to hide the original balloon and whenever new clones start, we want to show them on the screen. So I'm going to go to the purple look section and I'm going to drag this hide block at the beginning of the first script. So when the flag is clicked, the original balloon, the only one that we have on the screen, is hidden and whenever clones of it start to be created, we want to show those. So I'm going to drag the show block right underneath when I start as a clone. All right, now, when we show a clone, we want the clone to start right at the bottom of the stage, somewhere between the left and right. So we need to generate these clones at random position at the bottom of the stage, either to the left or to the right or in the middle or wherever. All right, so here's how we're going to do that. We're going to go to motion, the blue section, and we're going to drag this go to block. And it has two numbers for X and for Y. X, the number X defines where on the screen, either to the left or to the right, this sprite can be. So X smaller means that the sprite will be to the left of, of the screen and X bigger will be to the right side of the screen. And the number Y will position the sprite up and down on the screen. So the smaller Y is, the lower it's going to be on the screen and the bigger Y is, it's going to be at the top of the screen or uh, on the upper side of the screen. Alright, so we want this sprite, this clone over here, to start at a very low position, so at a very low Y. And I'm going to pass the number minus 240 for Y. So this will be at the right bottom of the stage. And for X, we want to generate a random number between the left and the right side of the stage. So I'm going to go to the green operator section and I'm going to drag this random block, this rounded random block, and I'm going to place it in the space for X. So in the place for X, we're going to pick a random from and I'm going to put here negative 200, which is the leftmost side of the stage, to positive 200, or simply 200, which is the right side of the stage. So this sprite over here will go to the bottom of the stage, either between the left or the right side of the stage, or somewhere in between, because this random block can generate any number at all. So if I go ahead and click this block that I've created, this blue one, notice that the balloon moves to the bottom of the stage in random positions at the bottom. So either the left or the right or anywhere in between. So this is where these clones will start to be generated when we created new clones. So I'm going to drag this block right underneath show. So this is the next thing that the computer will do when a clone appears on screen. So let's see what we have right now. So when we click the flag, new clones will appear every second at the bottom of the stage. All right, so notice that new balloons appear at the bottom of the stage everywhere between the left and right side. That's good. Now, we need to make these balloons ascend or climb up to the top of the screen. So here's how we are going to do that. First of all, I'm going to drag the motion section. So I'm going to click on the motion section and I'm going to bring in change Y by a given amount. Change Y by will increase Y by this amount. So this will make the sprite go up by this number of steps. So I'm going to say change Y by 10. This is good. 
Now I'm going to make this repeat automatically until the clone reaches the top of the stage. So here's how I'm going to program that. I'm going to go to control the light orange section and I'm going to drag this repeat until loop. So until a condition is true, the computer will continue to repeat change y by 10, which will move this clone upwards until a condition is true. And the condition that I want to pass here is that the position y, the number that dictates where um, on screen the sprite is, is bigger than a given amount. So until the y position is bigger than a number, the y position is going to ascend, to climb, or to increase by 10 steps. All right, so let me uh, show you a small demonstration. So first, let me bring this initial sprite to view, so we're making the sprite visible. And if you click change Y by 10 a number of times, the number Y, which says where on the screen up or down the sprite is, will increase, which will make our balloon rise to the top of the screen. So if we start at the bottom of the screen and we repeat this block many, 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 many times, and the computer is quite fast at it, the balloon will be seen as rising from the top, from the bottom and going all the way to the top. Now, at some point we need to stop. So for example, if we're here at the top of the screen, we want to stop. And if the position Y, which is now 123, which is bigger than, for example, 120, then we need to stop this loop and make the computer stop this repeat loop and make the clone disappear from screen because we are considering that the balloon has uh, climbed too much or too far for us to be able to click it anymore. So we're going to make the computer repeat this change Y by block until the Y position is bigger than 120. So I'm going to go to the operator section, the green section, and the condition is going to be, and I'm going to drag this greater than block, so I'm going to drag it here, so repeat until, and I'm going to go to the blue motion section, I'm going to drag this Y position block, so the number Y is bigger than 120. So not 129, but 120. So until Y position is bigger than 120, the computer will continue to increase the number Y or to raise this sprite. So let me drag this balloon downwards here, and let me click this repeat loop to show you how the computer will work through it. So look at that, the computer will ascend, will climb this sprite until it reaches this position. And now it's stopped because the Y position of the balloon is 125, which is bigger than 120. And so the computer will not do this any longer. So this is what we want to do when clones appear on screen. We want to start them at the bottom of the screen and make the computer ascend them or climb them to the top. So here's how I'm going to do that. So let's see what we have so far. So if I hit the flag, notice that after a second, these balloons will start rising from the bottom of the stage all the way to the top, but they will be stuck at the top of the stage. So they don't disappear when they reach the top because the computer doesn't do anything after the repeat look is completed. So I'm going to stop that and I'm going to make these clones disappear from the screen after the repeat loop has stopped. So I'm going to go to the orange control section, the light orange section. I'm going to scroll all the way to the bottom and I'm going to add a delete this clone after the repeat loop so that the clones simply disappear after they reach the top. So now when I start the game, the balloons simply disappear from view once they reach the top of the screen. So this is what we want. All right, now one more thing that I want to do is make these balloons look a little bit different with every clone because this balloon sprite has three different costumes, not just one. So we have a blue balloon, we have a yellow balloon, and we have a purple balloon. And if you want, you can create even more. So we have various colors for these balloons, and I don't want all the clones to you look all blue. So I want to generate a random costume that the computer will associate to every new clone. So at the beginning of the script, when I start as a clone, we want to make the clone take a random costume out of those three. So I'm going to go to the purple look section and I'm going to take this switch costume two and I'm going to place it at the beginning of the script. So this will be the first thing that the computer will do after creating the clone on the screen. So right now we have three possible costumes, but I'm going to make the computer choose between all of those at random. So I'm going to go to the green operators section and I'm going to drag this random block yet again and I'm going to place it where the name of the costume is. So I'm going to say switch costume 2, pick random 1, 2, and instead of 
10, I'm going to put three here because we have three different costumes. So the computer will choose a random number, one to three, and then it will switch the costume of this clone to that particular number. So if the computer chooses the number two, then the clone will have the second costume, and then it will be shown on the screen and the rest of the script will execute. So now let's see what we have. So now notice that our clones over here have different costumes. We have yellow balloons, we have purple balloons, we have blue balloons, and everywhere in between. And the computer chooses between those at random. So this is great. All right, so this is looking great. Now, all we need to do to complete the game is to be able to zap these balloons and score some points. So let's program zapping the balloons. So we are going to start a script here. I'm going to create some empty space here on my screen. And I'm going to go to events, the yellow section, and I'm going to drag the script when this sprite is clicked. So when the sprite is clicked, we instruct the computer to do something. And I want to make the balloon disappear and make a sound. So we're going to add some sounds to the balloon. Right now, the balloon sounds like a pop. So if you click the sounds tab over here, the balloon sounds like a pop. So um, this is the sound of the balloon. I want to pick a sound that's more dramatic. If you like the pop sound, you can keep this one, but I'm going to add another one. So I'm going to click on choose a sound. And as you saw earlier, we have quite a bunch of sounds here in the Scratch library. I'm going to search for a sound that's called teleport. The sound is the sound name is a little bit uninspired because uh, we're going to implement a zapping sound. But here's how this sound looks like. It sounds like something disappeared or got struck by lightning or something. So I'm going to pick this sound, teleport to, and I'm going to name the sound over here. I'm going to name that zap. All right. So this zapping sound is going to be what this balloon is going to sound like when it's clicked. So I'm going to go to the magenta sound section and I'm going to start the sound zap. So when the spread is clicked, the zap sound will be played. And after that, I want to make the balloon here, the balloon disappear because I've zapped it. I've removed it from screen. So I'm going to go to the control section, the light orange one, and I'm going to delete this clone. So I'm going to do that. Now let's see what we have. So I'm going to click on the green flag and we have some music. And now let me go ahead and click some balloons. All right, so notice that we can make the balloons disappear and make that zapping sound. All right, so now we can hit balloons on the screen. This is great. We can zap them, but we don't have any scores yet. So this is the last thing that we're going to program in this game. So we're going to implement scoring. So I'm going to go to variables here and variables. I'm sure you remember variables are pieces of information that the computer can remember. So we're going to create a small variable which will remember our score. And whenever we click a balloon sprite, whenever we click, when we zap a balloon, we're going to increase that score number by an amount. So I'm going to make a variable and I'm going to make this available for all sprites. I'm going to name this score. Then I'm going to hit OK. And the value for score is right now zero. I'm going to drag this at the bottom of the stage so that it's more visible. And the value for score needs to start at zero at the beginning of the game. So as I scroll up to when flag clicked, I'm going to set the value of score to zero. So instead of my variable, I'm going to click on score here. So setting a score to zero. Now, whenever I zap a balloon, I want to increase my score by an amount. So I'm going to drag this orange change block so I'm going to change the value for score by a given amount. So you can set the score by one by counting the number of balloons that you've zapped, or you can give another amount, for example, 100 points if you zap a balloon, all right? So I'm going to change the score by 100, and so the score will keep track of how many balloons you've zapped. And now the game should be complete. So let's play this game. So I'm going to make this full screen and I'm going to hit the flag and play some more. All right, this is fun. So I'm zapping these balloons and the best thing about it is that we programmed this game 
from absolute nothing. So we created the project from scratch and I'm really, really proud of you for following along with this video. You can find a link to the project that we created in this video in the description below. And if you like this video, go ahead and click the like button for me and subscribe to the Coder Prodigy channel because I'm going to be creating many, many, many more videos on programming for kids and beginners in various programming languages, including Scratch and Python and JavaScript and so much more. I'm Daniel and I teach kids to code at Coder Prodigy. I'll be seeing you in the next video.